Hello, welcome back. Today it's all about monsters. Now this is normally monster lore, but I thought I would do some monster combat tactics and we're going to do the skeleton. So grab some food, some drink, make sure you're comfortable. I'm going to put up a poll. Feel free to take part in that poll. Uh, this is also an opportunity for, now you can see maps, miniatures and dice, and I will demonstrate some of this stuff as well. I won't just talk about it, but I have a little bit of a slideshow that I have prepared for you. It's not long. And uh, then I'll go back to the, the battle mat. I f feel free to ask questions about this because I'm happy to respond to those. Okay. All right. So we'll get into this fairly quickly. I'm not going to muck around. And then at the end of the presentation and sort of the demonstration section, we will do some um, Q&A or questions and answers and probably make some stuff. Like we'll make some monster stuff because we've been doing a lot of that recently. Anyway, let's get started, shall we? Hi, welcome to How to D and D. Whoa, hang on, that's the wrong one. Oh, wrong channel, wrong channel. Reverse that. Hi, welcome to How to RPG, which is how to role playing games. Almost got that messed up, but look, today I would like to talk about skeletons, not so much robots, but skeletons, and combat tactics, and the sorts of things you might like to know. So what we'll do is we'll go over the special abilities, how they fight, and how you go about defeating them. And I think that's pretty much going to cover all the things you would need. Okay, so first off, uh, skeletons don't rely on any special abilities. So they don't actually have any special abilities as such. But they do have immunity to poison. So if you try to poison them, it's not going to be effective because skeletons are undead and essentially they are dead creatures okay they are dead things skeletons are vulnerable to bludgeoning damage because they're made of bones and bones are fragile when they dry out and these bones are dried out you can actually smash them with something that's uh, like a mace or a, a stick you can smash them a lot more efficiently than trying to use an edged blade skeletons don't rely on air food drink okay or they don't have to sleep they don't have to rest Another factor that comes into the skeleton is they have dark vision, although it's not clear what senses they actually have and how their dark vision or their vision works in the first place because they have no biology. This creature is, in fact, a more magical creature. Its op a mode of operation is magical in nature, and necromancy is certainly part of that. Okay. So now we have skeleton combat tactics. What are the tactics that the skeleton actually uses? Skeletons will attack with a short bow or a short sword, but they will use anything they can pick up. Like, it's not like they are restricted to just those weapons. They could use anything. Skeletons don't have special abilities or features, as I stated, but they don't need to rest and they can survive in environments that a living creature can't survive in. So you can place them under the water, you can place them in a section or environment like a volcano where it's uh, very hot and there's f toxic fumes, you can place them in places that normally your player characters can't survive in. So that's what makes them quite useful. Skeletons fight living creatures to the death. They do not flee a battle unless they have something like Turn Undead, that ability, um, forced upon them, okay? Turn Undead would force them to flee, but otherwise they will fight to the death because, remember, they're already dead and uh, what powers them is not the spirit that uh, originally existed within the body, it is a dark force. Skeletons use very basic tactics with nothing very complicated. So if a skeleton, if a skeleton is at distance, it will use its short bow unless it's forced into a melee combat. Uh, skeletons don't use cover to protect themselves unless instructed by their creator or necromancer to, that actually controls them. Otherwise, they'll simply stand out in the open and attack you. A skeleton in melee combat will drop a, a short bow and draw its short sword or use some other melee weapon to attack living creatures. And it's basically swing, swing, swing until you've either been killed or it's been destroyed. Skeletons don't target creatures that have bludgeoning weapons. They're not bright enough to be able to figure that sort of thing out. Uh, they don't avoid uh, creatures that are wielding maces and uh, flails or anything that does bludgeoning damage. They will simply tar target the closest 
living creature or the closest target that their creator has instructed them to destroy. Um, and they are, and this is simply because they're not they're not concerned about their destruction. They simply fight until or do whatever action has been required of them until they have been spent. Something like the dodge action, grappling, shoving, grabbing, uh, disengage, hide actions, uh, they don't usually get used by a skeleton or any kind of specialized action that your player characters might be using. They keep it pretty simple. So very easy to run in a game. Not that exciting, unfortunately. But here are some things to sort of consider in terms of trying to defeat the skeleton. And often skeletons aren't that difficult to, to, to defeat. What you want to do is you want to pair your skeleton with something else. If it's just skeletons or just one skeleton, it's not a very interesting battle. Okay, so how do you go about defeating a skeleton in a battle? Well, skeletons can't be bribed, they can't be bargained with. So if you're going to try to bribe them with money, it won't work. If you're going to bargain with them, they don't really communicate that way. Because they have a single driving force, okay, and that force is to kill other living creatures. You can't actually talk to a skeleton because they, they can't speak. They can only understand the language they knew while they were alive, and that's it. Skeleton bones are fragile, so bludgeoning weapons, as I said before, are more effective, and so you want to smash them with something that you can actually do bludgeoning damage with, or uh, actually crack those bones. Something like a cleric or a priest with turn undead or destroy undead abilities works remarkably well, and that's why they are there in the game in the first place. If you're playing any kind of D&D clone or D&D, turn undead. Now, the paladins turn the unholy ability for the Oath of Devotion works a little bit like the Turn Undead feature. It's also very effective. Destroying the creator or necromancer that animated those skeletons will not stop the skeletons attacking you. Okay? Remember, if you don't give them instructions, they will simply go after and attack living creatures. That's how it works. So if you think, oh, I can cut off the head of the snake, take out the... Uh, the necromancer or the wizard who created them and then the skeletons will simply stop attacking me no it's not going to work so you need to have a different strategy certainly by all means destroy the necromancer so they can't make more skeletons but it's not going to solve your problem if you see a skeleton lying on the ground or a collection of bones it's possible that that skeleton is actually a a full-blown skeleton it's not just a an inanimate um, leftover of somebody who's rotted away this might actually be a, a creature that will come to life. So keep your distance and be prepared to smash bones if you see them. This is one of the standard operating procedures in most role-playing games. If you see a skeleton, keep your distance and destroy it to make absolutely sure it's not going to rise up and try to attack you or eat you. Um, but skeletons don't need food, so as they're not going to eat you. You don't have to worry about that sort of thing. That pretty much covers all the things you need to know about the skeleton. Now, if this was useful... Great. I am glad to hear it. I want to thank all of my patrons who support me so I can keep running this program every single week. I want to thank you for watching, and hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Okay, give me a sec. I'll drink some water. We will go to the, uh, the battle grid in a second, and I'll do a little bit of demonstration and explanation. Um, help flesh things out for you, but let's just have a look and see how chat is going. Hello, Jeremy. How are you? I'm guessing skeletons just sit, uh, just sit as the bottom of the um, the sand pits for you. Yes, they could well be. You know, if you have a sand pit, they might be just sitting there for a long, long time. Uh, Philip, is it Philip Hole? Would a skeleton know its summoner's wishes if if you were to use commune with um, with dead spell? Okay, so let me just let me just un unwrap that question first. Would a skeleton know its summoner's wishes if you were to use commune with dead spell? Okay, now I think I understand. Okay, right, well, only if the summoner told the skeleton what they wish. Does that make sense? Skeletons won't know what the summoner or the, whoever created them wants unless it's been explained to them. Remember, they... They can understand, provided it's the language they, they knew when they were alive, okay, um, then, yeah, they, they could potentially do that. They're, they're, I mean, they're simple-minded. They're, they're not necessarily, I mean, you could say they're stupid, but, um, I mean, a penalty of, of two, if you're dealing with 5e, 
like they're about as smart as most most animals you know that that's really what we're dealing with so yeah i would say you could probably say that commune undead might work the problem is you'd have to actually lash them down because they're probably going to try to um, beat you to death um while you're trying to communicate with them so commune with undead mm, slightly useful but yeah tie down tie down that skeleton first all right jeremy what do you got here in the World War Z book, uh, there are millions of zombies wandering the bottom of the ocean. Yes, so skeletons would be wandering the bottom of the ocean too, more than likely. You'd probably find that it would be just the same sort of situation. So you can place them in all sorts of unusual locations. Uh, you may even find that there's a lot of skeletons on different planes of existence as well. Okay, so I've answered those questions and i think we've kind of got where we needed to be so what i want to do is i want to sort of go back to the battle mat and um i'm going to sort of uh demonstrate a few things things that are hard to explain but easier to demonstrate with uh with a, a layout so we'll do that today so this is my layout here uh these are the skeletons this is a skull lord over here and there are these are our player characters now, what you see before you is essentially a, a sewer, okay? It's a sewer. And so with a sewer, uh, there might be a few hazards, like these green pools of uh, muck and slime might be acidic, they, they might be poisonous, they might be just filthy. Um, and so that some of the aspects of your skeleton will kind of be played out here in terms of their route that they would take. Now, I'm not going to roll initiative and play out an entire combat um, scenario, but what I will at least do is demonstrate some of the aspects that I was talking about before. Okay, so first off, don't have special abilities. So as long as they have a weapon, and if they don't have a weapon, they may, as long as there's weapons around, they would probably pick up a weapon. But that doesn't mean that you need to have a skeleton attack with a weapon. If they don't have a short sword or a short bow, then don't worry about it. Um, these look like Grim Reapers, by the way, people, if you're wondering. Okay, so first off, t making an attack at range is probably the first thing you're going to do. Skeletons aren't going to necessarily just bother walking towards you. If they have a short, uh, short bow, they're just going to shoot you, okay, rather than moving towards you and then attacking with a sword. Uh, so it's going to be pretty much up to your player characters to close the distance, unless, unless that skeleton does not have a short bow. So what does that actually look like? So let's have a look here. Let's give you a quick example. Using 5e as an example in this case is probably the easiest way for me. Uh, so an attack. Okay. So our attack is a 20-sided dice roll. And our damage dice is a 6-sided dice. Okay, nice and simple. So what is our attack? It's a 4. So really pretty slim chance that they're going to actually connect with a player character you could say average damage if they have a, a, like an armor class of 14 and we're trying to get equal to or greater than okay most dungeons and dragons pathfinder most role-playing games it's it's either equal to or greater than with your attack rolls um, unless you're using a much older version of the game all right so roll your 20 sided dice we shoot our short bow and got a 15 Four and four, 15 comes to 19 and if we're targeting say our barbarian here I'll, with this this one here across there the distance there's no penalty on the distance so then we roll for damage now damage in 5e is pretty simple it is just a uh, two that's your modifier and this here is a success because our barbarian doesn't have an armor class you need to get equal to or greater than armor class would be certainly a lot low, lower than that so then roll for damage, six sided dice with a short bow, you roll the five. And the total damage is two plus five comes to seven, and you have hit your target. Pretty simple, not too difficult, correct? Right. So now the next thing to consider. Skeletons work more effectively in darkness, but only if you're dealing with a game system where all the player characters don't have dark vision. If they all have dark vision, then what are you, you going to do? Like, it would be kind of like a, a waste of time. So, um, you know, the benefits for the skeleton are kind of lost because almost every 
character that you play or race that you play in 5e has dark vision. But in older versions of Dungeons and Dragons and other role playing games, games like Pathfinder, where you don't have everybody with dark vision, there is a significant um, threat involved because you you can actually have skeletons um, come up from behind, from the side, from um, in front. They won't necessarily know they're there, and once they once they're in range, then of course that's when the skeletons come to life and start attacking. So yeah, that's that's the first thing to consider is like depending on the rule system you're using, dark vision can be important. Okay, would skeleton know not to walk through fire or lava? This is a good question, and Jeremy, I was about to kind of address this, so uh, let's let's deal with that. So once our player characters jump over here and engage in melee, okay, otherwise the rest are probably going to stay at range shooting bows if they've got bows. Don't have any special abilities. Don't have to rest. Okay. And they're usually not going to be concerned about taking rests. Don't flee from battle. But what if they do decide to actually cross and, 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 and get in front of your face? What if they don't have that short bow? What if we actually have to make them move? Well, the first thing is the most direct route is the one that the skeleton will take. It doesn't matter if they have to move through poison pools or something full of mud and muck. They're not going to worry themselves about um, fire. And potentially, they're not going to worry about lava. This is one of the things that you can kind of exploit and also make what makes the skeleton uh, a bit more interesting. Now, there is an exception to this. If you have a controller, such as a, a skull lord, explaining to the or giving instructions to the skeleton saying do not step in the lava okay or do not walk through fire or do not walk into the green pools of um poisonous acid or, or poison or acid poison's not an issue for them but acid would be um then they would go around them but otherwise if there's no instructions no skull lord take that away they're going to go straight across and engage the first target that's closest to them they're not worried about where, how much armor they've got on them. They're not worried about what sort of weapons they're wielding. Just the closest target. That's how they're going to move. So that means that you're going to find yourself in a situation where as they move across the battlefield, they are simply engaging the closest target. And they will walk through all sorts of horrible things. Would they walk around a, a hole? Now, I think that's the, the next question people have is like, would a skeleton walk around a hole? I think there's um, an argument to be made that if there's a hole that they could fall into, like a deep pit um, that's bottomless and so forth, that they probably will go around that. It's like, would a skeleton walk around a, a big huge stone or a rock or a wall to get to you? Okay, yes, they're going to walk around uh, a, block, a block or a stone or a rock, but they're not going to concern themselves about walking through things. They're not going to jump across stuff necessarily. This is where your your dungeon master or your game master needs to start making some decisions about how this will look. Because, as I said, depending on the instructions that the creator or controller has given them, they may behave differently. So I don't know if that necessarily answers your question, but without proper commands and instructions, um, no, they, they might very well walk through acid. They might walk very well walk into... Uh, a, you know, lava or fire. Would they fall off a cliff? Now, a cliff is a pretty obvious um, uh, barrier, okay? So I think the most likely thing is you would have your skeleton would climb down the cliff rather than just walk to the cliff and walk off? Probably not. Remember, remember it's it's got the same sort of intelligence as an animal, so think in terms of an animal. So if an animal's never had any, um, you know, experience with lava, it's probably going to go up to it and sniff it. And because a skeleton is not affected by heat, really, you know, it's not afraid of heat, whereas animals can feel fear. You know, skeletons don't feel fear unless you use something like turn undead. Okay? So they're not going to be afraid of lava or fire because not afraid of death, whereas animals are afraid of death. They understand the concept of um, injury and death. Yeah? So, I don't know, Jeremy, does that answer your question? You you let me know. What's this? Hello, Brian Murray. How are you doing? I feel like skeletons should be um, resistant to piercing damage. 
It follows logically and makes players have to get creative. So, Brian, I, I can't remember in the past whether the, um, skeletons were resistant to piercing damage or if piercing damage did less da um, less uh, less to them, to their bones. I think it might have been 3.5, but I can't remember, frankly. So it really depends. Um, and look, the, my suggestion to you is if you're going to run skeletons, give them some special abilities. Like, come up with some things that they can do that uh, no other monster can do. Otherwise, you just got your standard skeleton, which is kind of boring. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so Jeremy, you're, you're happy? It makes sense to you? Good. Um, also, too, like, it all it takes is for a game master to decide to change the way a skeleton will behave, and it can be explained by, this is what the creator first instructed it to do. This is how to operate. And so it just follows those instructions. Um, I feel like skeleton should be... Okay, so that's... You've, oh, you've typed it in twice there. Okay. All right. I see. I see. So we've, we've answered... Have we answered all the questions we need to around how skeletons would behave in an environment? You let me know. If, if we haven't, we can always come back to this. I think this would be a good point to actually um, zip on off and, uh, and do some, some work. We've been working our way through monster stuff for a while now and so it'd be nice if we can actually finish some of that up so the second half of this program is is monster workshop and in monster workshop this is where we actually uh, make stuff for you as a game master that you can use with your monsters so i would like to move over to that um, part of the um the live stream a few people are ready otherwise if you have questions let me know and um, yeah i think i've demonstrated all what i needed to uh, and i am just getting my phone organized so we're going to switch over views and and then we'll go into the final scene which is the document i've currently been working on pardon me i got gas again okay all right here we go. Um, share screen. Where is it? That's what I want. And we'll just make sure that I can see this on my phone. So I'll track what you're saying. Can they attune? Uh, Shay. Okay. Okay, Shay. Let's let's have a talk about um, attuning. Um. Well, I guess the question would be is, do you want the skeleton to attune to a magic item? Because there's nothing in the rules for 5e, and usually there's nothing related to um, older versions of D&D &D that state that monsters can't attune to magic items. One of the ways of actually making a, a monster keep pace with the player characters is to allow them to have magic items. Now, the, one of the reasons why it's a bit of a problem is they can take those magic items and once they take those magic, magic items, they, the uh, players have now got more magic items than they had before. So this is one of the reasons why game masters, dungeon masters are reluctant to do so is because if they do so, suddenly the player characters have more magic items. But there's nothing wrong with um, deciding that you, you're going to give one of the skeletons a magic sword or a magic bow or give them magic armor that required them to attune with it. Because, again, all it requires is for the, the creator or necromancer to cast Identify and explain to the skeleton how the magic item works. Okay? That's, that's, as, that's as simple as that. Or the skeleton can use an hour to um, attune to that magic item just like a player character and all it requires is because it's probably not going to do that well um, you know um, actively on its own instead what it's going to wind up doing is it's going to have instructions from the creator or necromancer saying I need you to understand and learn how to use this sword swing it around spend a bit of time with it get familiar with it that's really all that's taking place so yes skeletons could attune with a magic item if you wanted it to um so yeah if you're thinking that it's a 
a restriction that game masters would have that you know no skeletons can have magic items no it's you know traditionally all monsters could potentially have magic items on them all magic weapons and armor okay uh hello seeker how are you doing nice to have you here sorry i just i missed your um your comment there i, I just saw bones and skeletons and bits and so forth and i'd sort of it's just yeah i didn't pick up on that, that that quickly how's it going prepare cook and survive hello how are you um right i've included a mechanic where the skeletons that aren't incinerated or killed with bludgeoning okay aren't incited incinerated incinerated or killed with bludgeoning weapons ecr able to reassemble themselves pcs have to destroy the remains to be um certain yes brian so that would be relatively i think that's a pretty sensible way to go about it like you know the skeleton will just simply reform itself over time <laughs> that makes sense yeah so brian i think um i think prepare cook and survive likes your idea uh, what, what's another feature so if you look at some of the older versions of dungeons and dragons or role-playing games you'll find that you know there's been skeletons that are on fire they have magical fire around them they can throw fireballs at you uh, you can have skeletons that breathe um, toxic fumes you can have skeletons that uh, infect you with diseases or uh, even uh, pass on a curse you can have skeletons that that um, can reform themselves from other bones as they are destroyed uh, so you, you can do quite a lot of different things with them um, you can obviously giving them magic items does ramp things up a bit so yeah a couple of things you can do with that anyway I am going to open my phone and then we are going to continue with uh, our monster workshop and um, for those of you who have um, asked the questions you need to great if I need to go back to it I can the setup is still here and I'm willing to willing to respond so don't worry about it it's all good it's all good what do you got here Jeremy um, a skeleton counter needs a bunch of skeletons and a skeleton doctor that can quickly create new skeletons from the scattered remains of the others yeah so I think probably unless the skeletons are just there as a bit of a you know um, I'm not saying you need to do skeletons one way like there's only one way to do a skeleton encounter but if you want to make something a bit more interesting and you want it to be sort of a, a, a key aspect of your adventure then yes giving them a, a creator a necromancer a skeleton doctor in this case that can help repair them and give them orders is probably a good idea and then of course you have to make sure that necromancer or controller is out of view because your player characters are going to target them first and it's it's all going to be over grover if you don't if you don't do something like that yeah and pop out do something back behind cover yeah uh, otherwise a skeleton still make kind of like a good watchdog like they will keep out some of the riffraff not all of it but some of it do you know what I mean okay cool let's um let's close this up close this up here and we are working on a document that involves trying to build your own creatures and monsters we've been doing this for a little while now and I think we'll continue with it and if I can just find this is it here uh, will I increase the size a little bit of my head? Yeah, we can do that. There we go. It's a little bit bigger. Okay, so this this goes back to a live stream I did a while back called Freaky Monsters, uh, making your own freaky monsters. And I had discussed with AJ Pickett um, a good way of doing this, and uh, our discussion came to, and I'd, I've been leading this way that rolling on a table of one hundred different animals was a good way of creating sort of variants and different monsters of your own and you would take like the head of a particular animal then a body and then a, a limb or a, um, an arm or a leg or something like that and uh, we could do this with different animals such as animals that, that are in the sky uh, live in the water live on land live underground and we've been building tables for this it's actually proven to be quite difficult 
So for those of you who like the idea of having this, I will show you very quickly what we've done so far. They're not finished, but we're getting there. Now, the, the other thing is when I was talking to AJ, we, it was like we have to break it up into different regions. Otherwise, I guess the ecology and the habitat just won't make sense. So the biology will kind of be a bit whacked too. That'll let, get thrown out. Look at the hats going, people. The hat is off. Um, so, so what we've done so far is we've done marine animals. We're still working on this. We've got quite a few of them. And what we'll have to do is because some of these animals are quite unusual and not your standard animals. We've got about 81 of them so far. There's a few there that I'm not too sure if I need to keep, but we've got about 80. We were trying to aim for 100. I feel like we'll get there eventually. So there's a, there's almost 100. And what the, the intention is to have a short description explaining what it looks like. It's the physiology that we need to deal with so that you don't have to keep looking stuff up. We, that's what I'm more worried about is you looking stuff up. Land-based animals... Well, actually, as it happens, I think we're almost finished if we have not got 100 land animals. I think we do. Yes, we had hit 100 land animals, and I just need to put all the descriptions in of what they look like. Some of you will already know what they look like. Oh, that's right. The tree octopus is not a real animal, and I had put the tree octopus in here. Ah, that was the hoax creature, wasn't it? Okay, so now we're back to, now we're back to actually 100. <laughs> We'd also done, done uh, a list for subterranean animals. Now, subterranean, a lot of debate around this, a lot of joking, um, and we almost got to 50. I'm I'm still a little short. I need about three more. And we, we still got to work on flying creatures. So this is what I think we'll do. Since we've done the vast majority on the marine stuff, I still want to come back to it. I think what, what we'll do is we'll start doing 100 flying animals now i don't know if you can do 100 flying animals or creatures um trying to come up with 100 you know um, flying animals might actually be very very difficult but is that going to stop us of course not when does that ever stop me from doing anything stupid um no no i'm only kidding people i'm only kidding so i'm going to make up a new table and we're going to do flying that means we will come back to the marine but I, I'm also aware that um, the marine one is, uh, is, it'll slow down in terms of how much we can get done. So we're going to go with flying animals now, which means 100. If we don't get to 100, we need to at least have a 50, I would say. I think it would be reasonable to at least have 50 if we can't get 100 flying animals. Okay, uh, hashtag... What are uh, some flying animals? Now we need them to be biologically different enough. Now we're not going to be using mythological creatures. Now the reason why we're not using mythological creatures, prepare, cook, and survive, is I, I am always I'm already aware that trying to get to 100 flying animals might be just a bit too much. The reason we're not doing that is because remember, um, mythical beasts are already doing what we are trying to achieve, which is what we want to do is we want to have, you know, um, 50 to 100 flying animals, and then once we have that and they're different enough from each other. Then we want to piece them together by rolling on the ta table or selecting whatever you want to select from there, however you want to do it, to decide what sort of head it's going to have, what sort of body it's going to have. Then you roll again and you do decide what sort of upper limb is it going to have. It's like, what wings do, does this creature have? And then what sort of legs does it have? Because that, I mean, that's essentially where we are at. So those of you who have been here before will know this. We don't want to be using existing... Um, AD and D monsters because they already use this process. AD and D was full of this concept of take a, a bit of this animal and a bit of that animal, put it together, and make a new monster. Okay. Hello, Charles. Charles is a um, patron, and uh, thank you for being here today. <clears throat> so I'm going to put these into alphabetical order, and the first one I'm going to put in here is bird because I know it's the first one we're going to get. Okay, bird. Flying Squirrel. Hello, Todd. How are you? Welcome back. Um, flying Squirrel. 
I so when we say flying animals, I will also include gliding animals because there are a few animals out there that glide. They don't necessarily fly, but glide. So squirrel, the the, the flying squirrel is a glider, right? Okay, good. And then, uh, and as we go, I'm probably going to look up a few of these things that you pump in here. Bats, wasps, dragonflies. Well done. Prepare, cook, and survive. I'm going to get back to those dinosaurs in a second. Um, squirrel. Uh, bat. Yes, the bat is a flying animal. And we have a wasp. We have bee and wasp. Now, the, the, I guess the biology of the bee and the wasp is only slightly different. So I'm going to put bee in. Question mark. I'll put wasp in. Uh, and then what else we got here? Uh, flying dragonfly. So it's it's the dragonfly is the next one. So dragon fly. I think that's how it's spelt. Correct. Dragonfly. Okay. Um, right. So I, I've got to get some of these names and Charles is uh, going to leave me behind otherwise. Per and Pteranodon. Animal. So this is the Pteranodon. This is a dinosaur. Looks pretty distinctive. I think we can definitely use that one. Kind of expected that one to be one of the first ones we would get. So yes, let's include it. Uh, P. So when I say flying animals, let's include flying insects. If you can find an insect that flies, that's quite different to some other flying insects, then we'll use them as, as well. Okay. So I expect to see quite a lot of flying insects today. Is there a flying snake? Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are a good idea. Mosquitoes are a very good idea, actually. I don't know if there is such a thing as a flying snake, is there? I think their flying snake is a... Um, the flying fish, though, a flying... They're a real thing, aren't they? The flying fish. Also marine, flying fish. Um, flying snakes actually glide. Thank you, Shay. I will check that out. All right. Okay. So I, I'm going to have to move a lot quicker than I am. <laughs> I always knew that this is going to be uh, one of those things. I'm always playing catch up. My glasses are on and off constantly. Um, mosquito. Mosquito. Let's just go mosquito. Uh, <clears throat> there is a flying lizard. I'll look it up. Okay. You look up there. Oh, is it? Is that what it says? That's the one you put down before. A duck. Yes, du a duck is a bird, though. Is it? Is it distinctive enough that we can say that a bird and a duck is, like, is it worth going with that? Because otherwise what's going to happen is all we're going to do is wind up naming a whole lot of birds. So if we're going to give, if we're going to use birds, let's, 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 let's work with me on this one. If we're going to use birds and different birds, they need to be physically different enough from another bird that we have on the list. Otherwise, let's consider it not worth its while. So is a bird, when I put down bird, distinctive enough in terms of different from a, yeah. Does that make sense? The Japanese flying squid. Oh my God, you guys are coming up with some very um, odd things. So let me just keep track of this as I go through here. Let's go back to the, the micro... Oh, it's a dinosaur. The Microraptor? Oh. It kind of looks like a bird, but it's a Microraptor. All right, all right, Charles. Charles is working hard today. Microraptor. So you can see why I'm going to have to go through this whole list and give you descriptions of these things because there's no no end. Otherwise, you're going to spend too much time doing research. Uh, these was this one here that you just said before was the um, cry. So, Pelia. It's a flying snake. Really? Oh. Okay, it's a flying snake. 
So do we call it that or do we call it flying snake? I think what we will do is, I know this is going to come up more than once, so what we'll do is we'll go here. We'll add it in. And I will put flying snake with a question mark because otherwise it's just going to keep being something people suggest. Okay. Um, snake. Repeated. Okay. Mosquitoes, um, flying snakes. The gecko, the gecko color. What is that? Um, gecko cold. Is it gecko cold? Does this thing fly? It's a flying gecko. You're going to be shitting me. Is this a real thing? Gecko Kelly. Oh, it's got little webs on the side to allow it to glide. That is weird. That is a an odd one. Let's um let's take it. G Flying Lizard. Who would have guessed? Uh let's go there. Okay. So we're going to put down duck. We'll put down duck. But I'm not going to, if we're putting down duck, I'm not putting down goose. Okay. Or, because you know, it's, 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 it's too similar. A goose and a duck, they're too similar physically. To be mucking around. Prey mantis is a very good idea, though. Prey mantis is a very, very good idea. The flying squid. I don't know about a flying... I've never heard of a flying squid before. So, um, Shay X, you've got duck on the list. Um, is flying squid one of those um, hoax things that you guys tricked me about last time? Is, is this where we're going? The Japanese flying squid. A common squid or... Pacific flying squid, Pacific, no, tornadoes, really? Um, flying squid, the, the jet fighters of the ocean. I am slightly confused. Holy shit, it exists. It actually flies out of the water. Why would you do that? Look, flying through the air. To be eaten by a bird. Ooh, I love flying. So, well. They search. <laughs> that, is a, that is a strange one. Well, the flying squid it is. I think nature's stranger than anything else, isn't it? Squirrel squid. The flying squid. And we are going to put that in. So for those of you who thought this was just going to be a big list of birds, no, it's not. <laughs> um, we're doing all right. Your ducks can fly and swim. I know. We're, we're looking at things that fly. If it swims and does other things, it's not a big issue. It's just as long as it flies. <clears throat> okay, next. Um... Wallace's flying frogs. Rhinoceros. God, okay. Is there a flying frog? Come here. All right, there we go. Fine. Frog. Oh my God, there is. Is it, it's called a flying frog? The magnificent Ma Wallace's. Flying frog. Is it actually called Wallace's flying frog, or is it just called a flying frying flying frog? What is a flying frog called? Parachute frog, also known as the parachute frog. 
waltzes, flying frogs, and habit tense. Okay, well, let's go with a parachute because I like the idea of going with a P. <laughs> it, it feels more like it's a, it's more a, it's more like what it really probably should be, right? So let's go with a P. Parachute, parachute. Parachute frog. That is an odd one. Who would have guessed these things actually fly? Um, hummingbird is distinct, is it? Really? Uh, hummingbird. It just looks like a bird to me. I mean, they, they fly very fast, I, I understand, but it's it's just a bird. It just looks like a bird. Okay, next one. Um, the great, the giant, whoops, I lost the uh, internet. The giant Dobson fly. I apologize in advance. Brian, why are you apologizing in advance? I don't understand. I'm lost. Giant uh, Dobson fly. Oh, it's got two. Oh, what the hell is going on with that thing? It's got these great huge pincers in the front. It's got four sets of wings. It's got four wings rather than two. Okay, well, we'll, we'll put it down. Copy. Which actually begs the question, we probably should put down... Um, fly should we not just the standard fly because we don't have that on that list yet <clears throat> so if i just put down here fly so fly has only got t uh one set of wings or two wings in total very distinctive, so we're going to put the fly in. Fly me home again. There we go. It's the fly. Right, next. Um, I just looked that up. I, I hate it. <laughs> yeah, well, I can understand that one. Um... What's this? Prepare, cook, and survive. You've got something here that I didn't spot before. How far are behind am I? No, not too bad. Not too bad. Okay, we're all good. Let's just... So as as I add these in, people, you'll see I'll be doing a little bit of research to see what you, you've, you've, you've uh, found. What's this? What is that? Is that a... F is that a... F it's a mammal? It's not a... It's, it almost looks like a squirrel, but it's not a squirrel. I was always, it's almost like it's, is that a flying possum? That's a gliding possum, prehistoric creature. It's a gliding possum. That's what it is, isn't it? Well, gliding possum. Oh, it's a gliding lemur. It's a gliding lemur. Okay, all right, well, let's add that on. Let's see. Uh, C O C O C O. I think that goes about here. And that's that one. What's another one that people have pumped in here that I need to check? The prey mantis. Well, obviously, the prey mantis is very distinctive. So we'll put in the prey mantis. P for prey. Uh, Prey uh, mantis. Okay, got it. Locust. The bot fly is a horrible one. Uh, well, let's have a look at the bot fly then. Is it? Uh, does it sort of stand out amongst the fly family? Does it? The bot fly just looks like a fly to me. Bot flies are just, um, if you ask me, a bot fly is just the way, the way they operate is the way, that's the horrible thing, the bot fly. But it's still a fly. It just looks like a fly. We'll leave the bot fly alone. Locust. 
It's more like, I, mean, I feel like locust is kind of like grasshopper, isn't it? And we didn't put down grasshopper. Locust. A locust and a grasshopper. They're so, they're so similar. Um, but we haven't got grasshopper here. How distinctive is the grasshopper from that? I think they're pretty much the same. Grass. Grasshopper. So the grasshopper, and then we have the locust. And it's, it, it, they essentially look the same. I mean, they are, you could say they're different, but I would say they're about the same. So let's go with locust uh, for now. L, 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 L. Locust. Somebody's going to say grasshopper, so I'm going to put grasshopper in here, but with a question mark. Grasshopper. Repeating it. It's really, that's a repeat of the locust. Uh, next. So the flying squid glides when it's out of the water. Okay, good to know. Uh, flying and burrowing all in one, like the uh, the bot fly package. <laughs> flying spiders. Is there such a thing as a flying spider? That's just terrifying to think. Flying spider. I think they're gliders, aren't they? Don't flying spiders, they're more like a glider. There are such things as flying spiders. Sheesh. That is a horrible thought. Really? They're bad enough as they are. Are there flying spiders? Flying spiders don't possess wings, allowing them to travel like um, bees. Between. Instead, they have the ability to glide. Or balloon, yes. The balloon spider. Um... Is that of the grey cross spider, also called the bridge spider? Okay, so flying spider. Uh, flying is spider. Yeah. So that is um, M M M O T U. Uh, uh, spider, spider. Um, I think it's there. Spider flying. Okay, I got it in. It's down. A butterfly. Good idea. Nice move. That's that's yeah. The mo the mobula ray the mobula ray well I haven't heard of that one uh, butterfly though butterfly is very distinctive ah um good thing you guys are not in the room with me okay butterfly absolutely let's put that in this one here that you put down uh next so mob mobula Mobula Ray. It's a, is this a glider as well? Natural waters. Da, 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 da. So what is this? They they actually they they actually look like they fly out of the water. Sting you can jump. Let me just look this up a bit. Um, this will be the flying rays due to their propensity to bre um, for breaching sometimes in spectacular manner. Three rays gathered in a group and leap out of the um, surface of the air. Around two meters before splashing into the water. Okay, so they are a glider. Okay, well that's fine. 
let's let's um let's put it down. Let's copy that. Mob M O B. Mobile array. That's not it. Try again. My bill array. Okay. Um, I can't wait to see Fred's uh, reaction, especially after the flying squid thing. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm aware of balloon spiders because um, Australia has a lot of balloon spiders, and they float over from Australia to New Zealand, and we that's how we wind up with a lot of their spiders here. Uh, but also because those spiders require a very hot environment and it's it's just too cold in New Zealand, they don't live very long sometimes. Uh, but there, there's a chance that if they keep coming over, ballooning over, you know, those 2,000 kilometres from Australia to New Zealand, that they will eventually find a way to take up residence. But uh, yeah, so far it hasn't worked out that well. Um, should... We warned Fred about looking after the the bot fly in the um, the Google images. I've already done it. Don't worry about it. the moth. Good idea. The moth is very distinctive as an insect. Absolutely, I agree. And we're gonna go here. Moth. <clears throat> scarabs and beetles. Uh, flying scarabs and beetles. We don't have a flying beetle at present, do we? And they do fly, so hang on. Um, scarab. Now there's some that fly that and some that don't, correct? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure they do fly, but not all of them. Um, let's have a look here. Uh, <clears throat> consists of pig. Pigs don't fly. <laughs> Brian, got to jump off for a few. No problems. You go do what you need to do. No problems. You you, you go do what you need to do. I've got a f uh, feeling he knows. <laughs> Ants that can what? That can glide or is that too niche? Um... We don't have anything. I mean, I feel like the scarab is going to be going on, and I feel like a um, a gliding ant is probably. I mean, biologically, we don't have anything that's kind of like that right now. So, I'm I'm considering putting it in. Just give me a second, people. I just got to get some water into me. <clears throat> now, to broaden our 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 assets, I would suggest looking at. Um, extinct dinosaurs that fly that are different in terms of the you know um, the pterodactyl essentially like have a look at some different things that might be flying dinosaurs that have now are extinct also um, what's it D different birds that have a very different body shape to us to another to another bird because there'll be a few out there A flying ant is a thing. Yes. Like, give me a second while I just look up this one. Are scarabs from the mummy real? What? We're created with a computer simulator. Each insect created. Okay, so this is this is this kind of that. Um. Okay. Do scarabs eat flesh? And <laughs> they probably would. Uh, but more likely to be eating dead flesh. Fly. Do they fly? They can fly and be a nuisance. Right, the scarab is on. We put in the scarab in. Um, where are we? S C S C Why oh, I can't see this here. All right. There. Okay, scarab done. 
what was the next one that I had in here that somebody oh the flying ant uh, was it re what was rejected before derp uh, but I will suggest it again with a reason um, hummingbird is distinctive because of the way it it flies and moves it can hover and go backward the wing beats super fast too okay so when I was talking about this list remember it's not what it does it's not what the creature does it's how it looks because what we're doing is we're kind of being um, Dr. Frankenstein here and cutting bits off the various animals to attach together to make a new creature or monster so it's it's really about its physicality that's important rather than how it operates I agree with what you're saying um, totally agree with the fact that the, the hummingbird in terms of a bird operates very differently to other birds absolutely but physically it's essentially a bird do you know what I mean um, I mean the only thing that maybe distinguishes it even slightly is the fact that it's got a long narrow beak and that's that's really about it otherwise it just looks like any other bird an owl okay an owl is pretty distinctive in terms of it's a bird but it is a very distinctive um, creature so yes I would say that looks different from other things owl um, OP um, even now it looks the wings beat so fast they blur yeah no I agree and so I mean taking the taking the idea of uh, a you know, having a flying monster that has fast moving wings. I mean, how it operates is a great idea, but since we're dealing with the physicality of it, like what it actually looks like, this is what this list is really all about. We've already done monster special abilities and traits. So we've done a one for traits, 100 different monster traits, 100 monster special abilities, and that's where that stuff would be. Do you know what I mean? Uh, okay. So back to the, the, the flying ant creature. Let's have a look at this thing. Um, sep uh, at Oh, okay. What is this? this is an insect. This is a gliding ant, correct? Is a species of ant in the genus of blah, blah, blah. blah, 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 blah gliding because of the ability to parachute by steering their fall if they lose their footing oh so how how is it that they're able to do this how is it that I is it just because they're so light so it's a gliding parachuting it's a parachuting ant There's a lot of animals that seem to be able to parachute. Okay, let's 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 put it in. Um, C E. C E. Yeah, there. A stork, a vulture, a parrot. Okay, so now I've got to start distinguishing some of these animals. The the shoe bill stork. What's a puffin? Crane. Long neck. We don't have anything with a long neck. Derp, I think you're right. Um, I think the crane is a good idea. It's got long legs, it's got a long neck, it still looks like a bird, but it's distinctive in that, that it, yeah. So actually I would agree with crane is probably what we should put in there. Okay, so crane. R crane. Um, I'm going to take a, a break in a second, people, and then come back, but I will put in here a, a marker for this. So how far have we got here? We've got up to 30, we've got 
To get to 50, we need another 20. Think insects, unusual shaped birds, um, extinct dinosaurs. I don't know. I'm not sure. I haven't had a look. Hashtag. Um, keep. Keep coming up with flying animals. All right. So that's sort of my marker. I am going to take a quick break, come back, and uh, and then we'll continue on our merry way. Arnold will look after you. All right, I'm sitting, sitting, sitting back in the hot seat. Let's see how we go here. <clears throat> penguins. Do penguins fly? Puffins. I'm not sure what a puffin is, really. Um. Okay. All right. So let's go back into here over here so I, I see all your suggestions people I just want to type in this flying dinosaurs dinosaurs flight I feel like flying dinosaurs tend to look all the same So it's a mixture of a bird and a, a bat looking creature. So I'm going to I'm going to put the ye in copy. Y. That's weird. Didn't work out quite the way I was hoping.
the Yi. And uh, what else was there? Um, hollow bones, three toes. I don't think this is a flying dinosaur, though. Um, okay. We've got that one. We've got birds. What is that? Extinct climbing and gliding. Um, okay, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, we've got, I think we've got that already. Okay, all right. So back to uh, the chat. The behemoth moth. Does the behemoth moth just look like a moth? Because we've got moth down already. The hermit moth. What does that look like? What the? Okay. It's a moth. What is this thing coming off the end of it? Is that a thing? It is a thing. To this. From this to this. This is why you selected it, isn't it? This is nightmare fuel. This page is nightmare fuel. So, okay. Well, okay, so let's... Whatever's going on in the end of that thing is definitely whack. Have you seen this moth? Preferably not. Um, B A H. Behemoth moth. Nightmare fuel for short. Got hairy tentacles. They release a pheromone, a pheromone, a pheromone, for, a pheromone for females. Okay. Well, God, it's awful looking. Harris hunt, um, hawks hunt in packs. Why why are we going specifically for a Harris a Harris Hawk? Can't we just put down Hawk? I feel like a hawk is just like a bird. Do we really feel like the hawk is distinctive enough to 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 add in? Is it is that as good as we get? I honestly feel like somebody put down the word vulture and I felt like the vulture was a much better idea. Um, you don't have to apologize for it. The Draco lizard, okay, flying lizard. We've got the we've got a flying lizard already. Um just a bird on steroids. What are we what are we talking about here? Error Argentifus Argentifus This is just a bird a very big bird. It's just a very big bird, right? That flies. Okay, alright. Um What's the other one you got here? The hat. Hat C G. Oh God, my! What the heck is this thing? Are you shitting me? It's not a. It's kind. It's not quite a pterodactyl. What the hell? Is this the real deal? Is 
This is terrifying. All right, we'll put it down. Um, H, H I, J K L N. We'll put it in. It's some crazy stuff there. Okay, all right, I got it down though. Um, I'm just gonna do a, a refresh on my my stream just to make sure that I can actually see. Uh, comments. All right, so we're good. Let's go back, scroll back up a bit. Um, you're looking for a stat block? <laughs> no. Penguins. Do penguins fly? I don't know that. Do penguins fly? They swim, don't they? I don't know of a penguin that flies. I don't think they're built for it. Do penguins fly? I would be amazed. Penguins or birds? No, technically, technically penguins cannot fly. <laughs> so they do have wings. However, the wing structure of the penguin are evolved for swimming rather than flying in a traditional sense. Penguins swim underwater at high speeds. Um, it is a well-known fact that penguins can't fly, but puffins... Oh, that's why somebody put down puffins. Oh, now I'm starting to understand. Let's put in puffin. Why does a puffin... Puff... What does a puffin look like? Oh, okay. Well, it looks like a bird, but it looks like a very different bird. Kind of looks like those stupid birds from um, the, the new Star Wars movie. Do you know what I mean? The ones that um, that got cooked by uh, Chew, Chewbacca. Yeah, the Wookiee. Yeah, the Wookiee food. Um, puffins. OP. Let's put it in here. Puffins. Okay, I've added puffins to it. Puffin. Puffin X is penguins. Okay. Scorpion fly? I don't know. You tell me. Scorpion fly. It breaks, expands to, to hold fish. Um, okay. Scorpion fly. Shit, it's a, it looks like a scorpion that's a fly. Are you kidding me? It is a scorpion fly. Scorpion fly. Well, no, I, I think we can add scorpion fly to the list. I think that's definitely going on there. <laughs> I think we can't, can't deny that one. Um, but the two words go together. Scorpion fly. Gah. All right, nice job. Um, hairy tentacles. Going back up. We've got that one. Done the penguins. Puffins, we've got the puffin. There's been a few people who've tried to get me to put the puffin down. I've, I've finally figured out what it is. Um... Birds of Paradise. Birds of Paradise. What is that? Is that a bird? Oh, I see. Bird of Paradise. It's got a very unusual um, tail. I see. I see. I see why you've suggested it. Yeah. Yeah. Bird of Paradise. Um, so how do I 
do this. Is it is it all one or is it separated? Yeah, okay. Uh, like that. Okay, all right, bird of paradise. Okay, what's the next thing on here? Um, vulture, somebody had put down vulture. For the vulture's beak, it's um, kinked neck, the crest on its head, its wings are, its wings it's, uh, are its wings, its feet. I think it's the head and the neck that's about as, as distinctive as you can get in terms of a vulture, isn't it? So we'll put vulture in. Uh, I think, is that here? Um, S T U V U V W X Y. Uh, there. Uh, okay, vulture. A uh, stork. I think the stork and the crane are, an, are a part of the same family of bird, if I remember right. Stork. Stork and crane, I'm pretty sure, are that, yeah. Stork and the crane. I'm pretty sure they are, um, they're part of the same, the same family of bird. And physically they looked very dis um, similar. So we'll leave stalk alone. Um, parrot. They're like parrots, just a bird really. Parrot. Uh, it's the head, isn't it? You're, you're referring to the head and the beak section in terms of parrot. I'm putting it down as a as a question mark for me. I don't feel like it's that much of a um, yeah. I think it's a potentially droppable thing. Um, so do, oh, do we have the albatross? Because doesn't the albatross have a very unusual sort of makeup? There's a, I'm sure there's another one. Eagle. Big talons, sharp hooks, eagle. Eagle and the hawk. I, I know where you're going with this. The eagle might be distinctive enough. It's similar to a hawk, right? But the eagle is got similar biology, but it might be the, the one we want to use. Um, eagle, power, hawk, bird. Uh, we'll put down eagle. Again, eagle. Um, still feels like a bird though. Anyway, um, let me see. Our rejected flying. Okay, so back to here. All right, so we uh, we we've we we actually getting quite a distance through here I mean I think I think the limit is going to be about 50 flying animals otherwise we wind up repeating all the biology of the creature too much so we're up to about 39 we need another 11 to get to 50 so let's let's um, let's do another search here um, since flying dinosaurs didn't get me very far I wonder if I can do it this way is there anything that stands out here? They all just look like pterodactyls, basically. Which is not unusual. Um, we've already got that bird. What the hell is that? Oh, I, th I think we have that already, don't we? I'm pretty sure we do. Pterodactyl, pterodactyls, pterodactyls, pterodactyls. Okay, so let's go to um, flying animals. we do a search for flying animals what do we get we get what are four animals that can fly what do you mean four I don't want four I want a lot more than that <laughs> uh, paradise 
Oh, we've got a, is it, do we have, a, do we have the tree snake? Oh, we've got the parachuting gecko, the butterfly, um, flying squirrel, flying fish, Japanese flying squid. Ah, oh, this is, this is probably where this, some of these ideas have come from. I see, I see. It's pretty bird-like. I thought it was its its um its um its head section, or am I wrong? El albatross. What are we dealing with there? Albatross, albatross. Just yeah, it kind of yeah. You're quite right, albatross. Maybe that's not what I the al, maybe it's not the albatross I was thinking about. There's a, it must be something else. It's the one that has a it can hold a bit. It's got a a big pouch in the front of its mouth or beak. Maybe it's not an albatross. Maybe I'm getting confused with something else. Maybe that's what's going on here. That's that's why I'm not getting anywhere with that one. Okay, all right. So you guys have already given me all of those suggestions there. Fantastic flyers. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of those. So maybe that is not the solution. Um, since 10, flying animals that surprise, surprising flying animals. That, okay, let's have a look at this. Except, no, go away. We've got that one. We, I'm pretty sure we had a flying snake. We had a flying snake or something like that. Yeah, it's called the, it's called something else though, isn't it? It's not called a flying snake. It's called something else. Um, it flattens and, and it glides. What's this? A freshwater butterfly fish. A butterfly fish? What? Fins. We've got flying fish. Flying squirrel, flying fish. Okay, we've got flying fish. And then when there's butterfly fish, I have to have a look at that as well. Uh, we've got the flying squid. We've got the dragon. Oh, oh the draco lizard. Is this, um, is this... Oh, shit. That's different again, isn't it? That isn't the other lizard that you were talking about. Is that why somebody put down draco li lizard? I think that is... The Draco lizard. So it actually has a, a the ability to glide. This is different to the other one, correct? The Draco lizard. Copy. Oh, pelican. Oh, it's probably the pelican. Ah, oh, okay. D. Drac. Draco lizard. Okay, I think that's that one. We've got another. Um, oh, the gecko. That's the gecko Kali, uh, Kuli. The gecko Kuli. And then there's the Draco lizard. And they do look quite different, although they are lizard like. They've just got different. Um, I guess they're just slightly different structure in terms of how things work. Okay, I got it. Flamingo. Pelican flamingo is weird. Yes, they are pretty weird. The pelican. So this is this is probably the one I've been looking for for ages, and I just didn't get to it. It's just pelican. Yeah, that's the one I wanted to go with, just because of the um, you know the the drop down. Um, I don't know even what you call it in terms of pelican. So let's let's put the pelican in. Copy. P. Pel. You are my pal. You make me happy. There we go. Pelican. There we go. It's got it in. And then somebody said flamingo. Prepare, cook, and survive. And Charles said, "Yeah, okay. Well, I'm I'm inclined to think that you might be right about that. Let's have a look at though. Flam, mingo. 
Have we run out of flying insects? Oh, yeah, it is. It's kind of like a stork, but it's not like a stork, is it? Or a crane. The stork and the crane are very sort of similar. But the pelican, again, is like... I mean, how, how that thing even exists... All right, I'll put it down. It's, it is probably part of the stork family or the um, the crane family or whatever you call it. So flamingo, fla, 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 flaming mingos. Where are my flaming mingos? Flamingo mitis. There we go. Flamingo. Here we go. Done. Flamingo is in. Uh, right. So where was I? Just check to make sure I've kept caught up with all the chat. I think I have, all right. And so now it's down to, uh, for those of you who showed up to do um, for uh, Monster monster Combat Tactics or the Skeleton Monster Tactics or Skeleton Combat Tactics, it's in the first part of the live stream, people. First part of the live stream. The Peacock. Is that because, that's because of that ridiculous tail it has, correct? Because it has a pretty ridiculous peak. Uh, the peacock has a pretty ridiculous tail. Peacock. And it's got a ridiculous name, if you ask me. Yeah. I think we're going to have to put it on there. Like that tail is one thing, but even its head, even its head and the crown that it's got on top, it's like the, it's like the royalty of birds, isn't it? The peacock. I'm not suggesting that I have an issue with um, royalty, by the way, people. But if you think that I am, feel free to um, go down that, uh, that train of thought if you like. <laughs> anyway, the peacock. Anyway, moving on. Um, <laughs> what else have we got here? You just got here, Pale Rider. Well, welcome, Pale Rider. We're doing all right. I think we're going to wind up with about 50 flying animals that can be turned into various monsters. I think we need to start looking at some of the um, yeah, flying animals. Even gliding animals, we're accepting gliding animals. We've got a lot of gliding animals in here as well. Um, peacock, fantastic. So we've done that one. We've got the squid thing. Oh, that's right. That's you. You, you mentioned this um, before. Okay, so that's that one. So let's get out of here. That doesn't give us much more. It, it's a list of about ten, which is really not that many. I was looking for. We're looking for fifty, baby. And um, yeah, that's not. That's not going to do it. So. Flying animals list. What does this say? Got that one. Flying fish. Got that one. I think we've got the we've got a snake that flies in there. I'm sure we somebody said something about a flying snake. It's called something. I just can't remember what it is. Yeah, it's in there somewhere. I, I, yeah, I'll we'll, 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 we'll leave that alone. We've got the uh, the gecko that um, that glides. We've got the the flying squid. We've got the flying squirrel. We've got the draco lizard. Um. We've got, oh, the butterfly fish. I, I was looking at the butterfly fish, wasn't I? Butterfly fish. Did somebody, one of you's probably already mentioned this before. Falcon. Hello, Brian, um, Byron Lee. Uh, falcon, I feel like a falcon's pretty much just another hawk or an eagle. We've got eagle there already. No, I don't think so. Butterfly fish. Fish. Nah, nah, I'll leave that alone. Um, next. What is this? Is that a half beat? A uh, flying palamic. Oh, okay. What's that? The devil rays. Oh, that's the that's the ray that that glides, right? Gliding ants. Um, great gliders. That's a that's a that's a parachuting gliding what do you call it um possum basically isn't it um i'm not sure what this is all about so i'm a little yeah let's just go down here and have a look balloon spiders no we've got that one gliding spy um, gliding ants
yeah, we've got that one. Um, okay. When pigs will fly. Pigs, when pig. No, I'm not putting a pig on there. It's basically just a dog, exactly. And as you know, I never put anything on a list um, if it has anything to do with looking like a dog. I love dogs. But you're not going to Frankenstein my dogs, okay? Um, <laughs> phone going to die, still watching. Um, night, late. No problems, um, prepare, cook, and survive. If you if you have to bump out, that's, that's totally understandable. So this, um, this half-beak fish thing, they use their big pectoral fins as wings to fly above the water surface and escape aquatic predators. It's basically a flying fish. It's, it's, it's basically a flying fish, so we won't worry about that one. Okay, so those are those ones. I think we've kind of exhausted that. Flying and gliding animals. Is this a different thing? Is this going to help me? Mammals, insects, uh, birds, mammals, non avery flying gliding. Uh, okay, that's the raptor, the micro raptor. Okay, so that's fine. Let's see. Let's let's go with flying insects. Flying insects. Flying spores. May not fit, but flying spores. A spore a spore is not really a living creature, is it? It's a it's a it's a it's a vegetable thing, isn't it? Is it a vegetation thing? Is that not it? Oh, you know what we haven't thought of? And I realise that we probably could. Don't aren't there airborne viruses? Um, airborne virus. Aren't there airborne viruses that just float in the air? There are, I'm sure there are. Airborne virus. Lovely. A bacteria or virus that are commonly transmitted through... And they just float around in the air. And then they pass, and they can float for like forever. So, airborne virus. Let's do that. Copy. That just gave us another one. That is not a vegetable. <laughs> that is an air, that is a, a creature. All right, very simple one. Um, okay, so next, what else? There, I was looking at insects before, wasn't I? If we could find some different insects, we we are six off, six more, and we 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 can put that to bed. Uh, obviously, flying in, um, animals is actually quite difficult. Would you believe it? I wouldn't have um, thought that would be the case. We've got mosquito. The fruit fly feels like it's just another fly. The the bot fly viewed. Let's view them all. So we need something that's got a uh, as as distinctive a body as possible. Okay. Or do they just all look the same? That's the I guess that's the next question. Oh, um, yes. They've got ridiculously long legs. They're called, how, and they've got those ridiculously long legs um, on them, with a, a sort of a fly body and really large wings and a tiny body. You know what I'm talking about, aren't, aren't you? These this thing here, like this is. I come across these things at home all the time, and this is actually not a bad one to add. You could add that one because it's very distinctive, even though it is an insect. And it's a P, put it in the P section, P, Pilaria, Pilaria, gosh. What a wonderful name. 
easy to remember, easy to pronounce, easy to understand, sweet. Good lord. Anyway. Valeria. That's a very distinctive little sucker, that one. Okay, right. What, was it? what do we got here? Um, wasps or mosquitoes can be a pain. In, yeah, I've got them down already in the back, but um, flying them in D&D uh, &D can be even harder to handle. Uh, yes. So, so we're actually trying to use these to make monsters from, so we need them to be fairly distinctive. And that's pretty distinctive. I think that's, uh, that's going to do fine. We'll, we'll keep that little sucker. Um, picture wind, picture winged flies. What's this? Uh, it's just a fly, isn't it? It just looks like a fly to me. Is there anything else that stands out to people? Oh, well, maybe this does. What is? What the heck is that? What is this? Uh, it doesn't have wings, does it? It's a genius of a wingless crane flies. It consists of two. Okay, so it's, it doesn't fly, though. Yeah. Snowfly. Snowfly basics. Right, okay, let's have a look here. Um, no. Uh, so let's go back. The stork-eyed fly. What about the stork-eyed fly? That stork-eyed fly looks pretty, pretty rad. What does this look like? The stork-eyed fly. Its head and eyes are just bananas let's 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 put the stork eyed fly in there because that'll give us a really good um, head section its body section is pretty standard its wing section is pretty standard but uh, the standout feature is the yeah the stalks so um, s t Stork eyed fly. Stork eyed. Fly. I'll put that one in. Okay. Um, let me check spores. Somebody had mentioned spores. I don't know if spores are actually a living creature. Spores. 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 A spore is a cell that contains fungi, plant, moss, ferns, bacterial. Okay. Uh, in biology, a spore is a unit of is, is a unit of sexual or asexual reproduction that can be adapted to disperse for survival. Often, I think I see where you're going with a spore idea, Pale Rider. Is a fungus a plant? Is a spore a plant? Spores. Are re reproduced by bacteria. Bacteria is not a plant. Fungi. Oh, I see. It's it's it, it can come from. Okay. Are spores plants? Spore is a cell that, that contains certain fungi, plants, moss, ferns, and bacteria. And bacteria, certain bacteria make spores as, as, as a way to defend themselves. Spores have thick walls. Um, okay. Unit of cells that germinate or develop new individuals within without fusion with other reproductive cells. They are single celled enclosed by a cell wall. Supposed to not have a fuse. 
Oh, I see. It's it's actually not that simple, is it? Iron spores. I guess that's the. Yeah, do, do, this is where I'm starting to realise is that some. Um, in biology, spores are a unit of sexual. Um, is a unit of sexual. Um, Spore. Uh, that's different from game that switch. Okay. Is a spore an organism? Well, we may be able to add that. It's it's sort of it's sort of on the border, isn't it? It's sort of, but it, I mean the problem with a spore in terms of its biology, it's like it's like a virus. It's not got much going on, so it would be it would be very very difficult to sort of utilize uh, in your monster creation. Um, I'm going to put a question mark on spore. But I will put it in. I will put it in, but I'm going to put a question mark. Spore. Question mark. Because, I yeah, I'm not completely sold, but I'm not actually turned off by it. So three more. Three more of these little suckers, and we're done. And that makes uh, that makes 50. Okay, so well, it, it's pretty clear to me now that um, flying creatures are actually pretty difficult to do. Uh, let's have a look here. More insects. Uh, it looks they all look just like flies of some kind. Um, what's this? Oh, we've got that one already. Oh, I see. I've got to go back, don't I? Okay, and then I can go forward along here. Um. Oh, I know it. I know what I do. Here we go. Weta. Weta. I don't think they fly, though. I'm pretty sure that Weta's a wingless. They don't fly. Um, and they do look very much like a locust. Or a cicada, but um, they, uh, yeah, I don't know that they're going to actually fall under that. How's that for nightmare fuel, people? Trust me, get one of those stuck in your hair and you're not going to have a good time. And they hurt when they bite. They don't, they're usually not very poisonous, but they do hurt. because they And they're covered in blooming barbs, so they're not fun. Um, do wet up. Bite, yes. <laughs> people do ask. Okay, fly. And I'm pretty sure they don't. They are nocturnal, and all New Zealand species are flightless. Yes. Different species have different diets. Most wetter are predators or omnivores preying on other invertebrate. But tree and the great wetter eat mostly lichens, leaves. Okay, so um, how high can a wetter jump? They, they, can, they can jump pretty high. <laughs> right, so it's a jumping thing. It is not a glider. It is not a flyer. It is not an option. She's off the board. Good. Happy about that. We're almost out of time and I have to go to work. Um, so is there anything else that I can do here? Uh, unusual birds. S see if we can find some unusual birds. What the hell? That is a weird bird. Is that a bird? What is that? Strange looking birds. That's a strange looking bird. I don't know what that is supposed to be. Um, now that doesn't fly. Is 
is that a cockatiel? A cockatiel's got a fairly unusual beak and head to it. We could probably squeeze that little sucker in there. Okay, so we've definitely got some options with the birdie stuff. Dragon? Yeah, but dragons are, are, are fantasy creatures. We're trying to create a, from a list of real animals a fantasy creature. A dragon is just basically a giant flying, um, what do you call it, um, bat or uh, pterodactyl, really. That's, that's, that's what they are. So, uh, yeah. Run, baby, run. See that giant bird? It's hungry for you. This this odd sort of um, flat beak here is um, potentially an option too. I'm going to, I'm going to think about this a little bit. Um, percolation time. And uh, out of time to, to work on this, which is a shame. I think we all know it flies. Yeah, dragons do fly. Yeah. But we, we won't add... As I said, I don't want to add fantastical creatures because we're trying to use animals to make fantastical creatures. So we have a few here. Three more. I'm sure we'll get them eventually, just not today. <laughs> it is all right. It is not the end of the world. Um, this, is a, this is a project which I knew would take a little bit of time to get uh, sorted out, and it's all right. I can live with that. Anyway... Let's uh, let's roll on out of here. Uh, so what is happening tomorrow? Tomorrow, uh, what is tomorrow? Today was monster lore and combat tactics in the workshop. And tomorrow's, oh, we're building a fighter for Pathfinder 2nd Ed Edition. That's right, Pathfinder 2nd Ed Edition character building. Ah, there we go, oh, now I remember. Sweet. Good news, good news. Let's have a look at our poll before I disappear for today. And close that up. Okay, so, uh, do you want more monster combat tactics? Yes, 91%. Holy shit. Okay, all right. Understood. Um, undecided, 4%. Just watching, 4%. No, okay. All right, so out of 24 votes, there's a lot of you who want monster combat tactics. Charles, you're welcome. Thank you for being a patron. Those of you who are wondering where all of this stuff will eventually wind up going, well, it's going to be on the internet, and I'm not hiding the live streams, but it will be going to Patreon. So all these documents that we are building or um, I'm typing up, is uh, it's all going to Patreon. That's where it all lives, okay? All right, so uh, big, huge thank you to everybody who took part in the poll today, everybody who's been in the chat and commenting, everybody who's been watching or re-watching the live stream. I do appreciate it. It does help a lot. Uh, those of you who have been throwing your ideas forward i do appreciate it uh, a big help in making this list come together and uh certainly not finished but we'll we'll get there i'm sure it's um it's doable and we'll return to uh, doing marine animals and hopefully tidy up the rest of it uh in the future but um look wherever you are in the world whether it be the morning the afternoon the night or the wee wee early morning please look after yourself your family and your friends be nice to your neighbors and hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. <laughs> well done, Fred. Fred Hubber. Good good job. <laughs> you did. You showed up just in time. Just in time for me to leave. <laughs> next time, Fred. Next time. <laughs>